help the um, community started out to help serve the ability at 10 minutes and I can introduce my own. So on my far right, I have
I also had concerns with what was going to be discussed in that meeting. Uh, so in my last in camera that I was just in, we had a discussion about what we could talk about in camera and in public when we're looking at a posting something and I was told that, you know, it's a discretionary thing, so I'm going to use my discretion, I'm going to use my voice, and I'm going to say that much of this could have occurred in public and that I have significant concern that a motion that has to do with our public agenda was discussed in closed doors. I have huge concerns that we will be changing the name of trustee comments to trustee report. The last time something like this was said, why? You were out of order. Why? You were out of order because first of all, you're factually correct. It says trustee comments on the agenda. Okay. And secondly, if you have concerns about the content of the in camera meeting, you can have a conversation in camera. The items of court, you are entirely contradicting what you no, just said. Not. Very much like you often do. You are contradicting what you said. This is not a problem with parenting behavior. We're not going to argue. We're not going to argue. I would like to finish. So, Liberty says I can have some comments, which is well, on the agenda. So, I'm well within my right to speak to it. So, that you can ask I have significant concerns that we are limiting the time that elected officials that were elected by people are being able to speak. And my biggest concern was the last time we saw this was during the staffer closure, when the board was at its absolute worst. Why are we limiting voices of elected officials at a public meeting? So I'm very confident we will all go through. And I think it's very important that the public understand that there are things happening in meetings that I believe could happen publicly and they're being done in the guise of confidentiality. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Cohen. Any other questions? Great. So I'm wondering, I guess, about the background because I, as well, didn't feel comfortable attending the meeting where this was brought up. Um, I understand why we would want to make meetings that end by now. I understand that staff have a life, and I also have a life, actually, and don't enjoy staying until all hours of the night. That makes sense to me. I also think I can understand for time and efficiency why we would wait for presentations to conclude before asking questions. These things make sense. What I'm very unclear on is the rules being suggested for trustee comments. And after doing a bit of research, it appears the trustee comments have been a part of the board agenda for decades. And they have always been unrestricted. So it seems clear that this motion and these rules have been created because certain trustees were perhaps saying too much in their comments. But we as trustees are elected by the public. We are the voice at the table for the people that vote for us. Putting these restrictions on trustee comments is effectively silence. The only opportunity some trustees have to speak openly and transparently about what is happening at the board level. So I am going to propose an amendment. And my amendment is that I amend the motion to remove trustee comments rules one through six. Is there a second to that? By oh, great. So on the amendment, um, I believe if everybody looks through their rules, they will see that rule seven, the last rule, is actually that each trustee may speak for up to two minutes. This, under the guise of wanting to work more efficiently, is the only rule that makes sense to me. I'm willing to limit my comments to two minutes if it means staff can go home earlier and then everybody can get on with what they need to do. The other rules are all just there to silence people and I believe they're unnecessary. We are grown-ups. We do not need to be governed by this. We are the government. So as far as like 4B, a trustee, what if a trustee is retiring? We can't acknowledge them. 
because we're not allowed to direct our comments to another individual. What you just did with Trustee Perot congratulating her, that would certainly be off the table if we adopt these rules because we are not to direct our comments at another individual trustee. There's the business of the meeting. So we are not allowed at the end to say, that was a great presentation because we would be breaking rule 4C where we can't mention business. So unfortunately, there are way too many rules that are unnecessary on this. So my amendment is to remove one through six. So just to um, clarify here, you would also like to remove item number five, which has the current camera item that you can't speak about personnel or related contract negotiations. Um, yeah, those are all in our policies. We are better by our policies. We don't need them in our standing rules for trustee comments. Uh, you can cover
What we are about to talk about is difficult. What we are about to discuss is a history that many of us never heard. And it's important work that we need to move through together. I think it's important that I start off and I by recognizing the efforts of all staff to make truth and reconciliation within our district a true commitment and something we have worked towards. I think it's important that I honor our community partners, our local nation, the ISL, the people who have guided me through this journey. And most importantly, I want to take the opportunity to thank the staff of the Aboriginal program. I want to recognize Donna Robbins for the work that she's done from the program, Janet Strongquist, Brian Coleman, Gail Strongquist before Janet, and many, many others who have been a part of that, and our 30 Aboriginal support workers, our language teacher, Sessimoff, and Gabriel, Rhonda Philpott, and a team who continue to work daily on this journey. And it's important that we understand that we are all together on this journey and we're working together. 
It's important that we acknowledge the traditional territories. And so I want to take that opportunity to thank Nasquik, Faulkman, Casey, Semiam, for being stewards of this land since time immemorial. That despite the efforts of settlers and colonialists, they have strived, they have been resilient, and they have continued to do the good work. And I thank them for taking care of these lands. As we uh, center our learning tonight, I want to focus around the four points from First People's Principles of Learning. One, ultimately when we learn, it needs to support the well-being first and foremost of ourselves. But it also needs to add to the family, the community, the land, the spirits, the ancestors. That learning cannot be done on your own. It is relational and it needs to be focused on connectedness. That when we learn, it's important that we do so as an exploration of one's identity. And also tonight, we want to recognize the role of Indigenous knowledge. And that we need to value it to the same level that we would for knowledge that comes from us. So with the previous board in 2015, there was a commitment to reconciliation. And we have these plaques up throughout the board office, throughout schools, and we have done work to honor our journey of reconciliation. And so it's important that we come back to that, that the previous board had made this commitment, and that this board has said they would continue that on, and that staff continue to do that work. But then when we talk about reconciliation, that we really do so within two points to reference ourselves. One, if we are actually doing reconciliation, we are taking that first step to hold indigenous knowledge as equal to knowledge that's come from elsewhere. And two, we consistently go to examine our my own relationship to indigenous people. That I'm going to reflect upon my own journey and when I, we talk about that, we talk about it in terms of what is it that I know about Indigenous people? What have I learned? What stereotypes, beliefs, biases might I hold? What do I know? How have I come to know that? For many of us, without calling all of us old, we would probably come to know a lot of things through racist and out of date material. And so how is it that for us, while many of our students now, including my own daughter, are able to go and learn the real history in school, how is it for all of us that we have come to know this and how are we going to learn more? And ultimately, once I've looked at that, what implications does that have for me in my professional life, in my personal life, for you as trustees, for you as members of the community? What does that hold and how am I going to move that forward? I always love to find quotes. I also use a lot of memes, but not tonight. And this one stands out for me. This comes from Richard Wagamese's his, uh, book, Embers, where he talks about teachings come from everywhere when you open yourself to them. And that's really the trick of it. Open yourself to everything, and everything opens itself to you. And when I spoke with Cheryl Gabriel the other night, the other day, sorry, when we talked about reconciliation, she said to me, Mike, it's really quite simple. It's, it's listening wholeheartedly. It's taking that time to listen and determine where you can support. And that is what we have done. And that is what we will continue to do. So I hope tonight that you will listen not only with our head, but with our heart. 
and that we will open ourselves to the possibility of what we can learn. And so in terms of these highlights tonight, it does seem a little odd I'm not going to come up here and, and have highlights. Uh, it, it seems quite, in some respect, quite colonial. Um, but we are in essence. And I think we would be remiss if we did not honor those who worked very, very hard to bring Orange Shirt Day to the line of schools. And so I wanted to take the time to honor Sequia, Josette Danda, and Wayne, Luke Danda, Josette, an elder in Wampum First Nation, Luke, her son, an Aboriginal support worker, Peter Ewer, in Yorkson Creek Middle School, and Cecilia Riki, a former trustee here in the Langley School District, as well as a cultural presenter with our program. And they put in a tremendous amount of work to bring Orange Shirt Day to our district. And this is now the sixth year that our schools have come together to honor those who went to residential school and those who did not return. There. So I want to share with you some reflections from Orange Shirt Day. I had the tremendous honor of traveling around to a number of schools. Uh, I got to travel with Superintendent Ford Stewart to a number of them as well. And we experienced just how difficult it can be to stay on time when we want to talk to others and we want to be in community. And we had this great pleasure of starting here at Short Read. And Short Read had the opportunity where they just simply started off with the board of every child deserves. And then each class of cohort would get a board with a word or a phrase that would fit with that and students had the ability to reflect. So every child deserves love. Every child deserves a family. Every child deserves to feel safe. And every child deserves to belong. We also had some other opportunities. In the top, top right, sorry, top left corner is at Betty Gilbert Middle School, where when you walked into their foyer, you would see these uh, rather large orange t-shirts up against the wall hanging with all sorts of facts and information regarding the residential school system. And you can sort of see there, there's a, a stretch of orange t-shirts, paper orange t-shirts where people can write words, feelings, emotions on there. And then down the side are a number of feathers with other words of hope, resilience, truth, and students would come into this area and sit with their class and be able to, and, and while it was happening, we heard the music, the secret path by work down. And students sat and reflected. And I'll be honest, you know, I worked in Alder Grove previously. I've been connected to Betty Gilbert and students there. I have never seen a situation where you could bring a group of students together at that age and they would sit without a sound for eight seconds or eight minutes. And then they would sit in circles and share their learnings, their feelings, and the depth that they would go to. It was a powerful moment to be there. We had the same reflection type activities at Peter Ewart where you see the tree and throughout the school you could go to different spots and find a tree for your grade level with an orange shirt that you would have put up there as a student. They were also given trees as Luke Dander and shared the story of the tree in his backyard of his aunt, his aunt Mary, who went to, to residential school. And there were trees that they would put on lockers to decorate the school. Words of reflection, things to think about, powerful moments yet again created by students. We had the heart gardens of James Kennedy where students were able to go and walk outside and place these hearts with their own reflections on them. And finally, yes, we are in COVID times, but we can still find ways to have assembly. And so that bottom picture on the bottom left-hand side is that of a virtual assembly at a school in our district using Teams. And I think it, it, I would be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to say part of the reason I wanted to thank everybody off the beginning would be that I think this year, more than ever, everybody took a role in it. 
because we didn't have the opportunity to do the giant school assembly. We didn't have the opportunity to leave it in the leadership of a few people. Everybody had a role to play to ensure that the learning and the reflection happened within the class. And so even with these virtual assemblies, there would still be activities for students and teachers to do together in reflection. And the reflections are powerful. To be able to walk through and see what these students are thinking and feeling and saying, it's powerful. There is learning happening. And these last three come to me from uh, our average support worker named Linda McCullough, who works at Douglas Park and, and Mulhu. And she shared her own story with this class, and they wrote back to her on these orange shirts. Things like, Mrs. McCullough, everyone loves you so much. You stand tall, strong, proud, you matter. And this one child, Linda said, I had to include this one who said, I'm sorry to the kids who died and did not make it back, but I hope that they are having the time of their life with heaven again. These are young children reflecting on this. But it's not just about Orange Shirt Day. It can't be. We can't be a singular event and expect to do reconciliation. And really, Orange Shirt Day, the wonders of it, as difficult as it is, especially at this time, you know, in a COVID situation, to come together on September 30th to organize events, the power of it being so early is that it is a conversation starter. And this needs to be not simply just a day or a week, but a way we do things within this district. And so it is that conversation starter for schools, classrooms, district staff to continue to do the work. And so we have some other opportunities to continue that work. And I think it's important to highlight the cultural presentment program. This is a program where it's a, well, I say it's a diverse program of people who come from multiple nations, but also from many nations within BC and across this country, who come to share their teachings and their cultural understandings with all of our students and with our staff. They come in and they share their understandings to move us all forward and together. And this is not an event that is focused solely on Indigenous students and saying it's a support for them. This is a support for all. And I want to take time to honor those who do these presentations and where they come from. And so we have Ernie Garden, a former African support worker who still comes back to our district from the Cree Nation, representing the Second Creek Band in Northern Alberta. Carla is Auntie Helen Carr. Carla is Auntie Helen's daughter. They come from Kwantlen First Nation to teach kids about beating and weaving. Crystal Belong from the Kwak Kwak Kwak. And I butchered that and I'm sorry, Crystal. But I do my best. Who comes and teaches our students? And if you don't know, that's a nation uh, located on Bank, Northern Tip of Bank, Rhode Island. So, understanding that we have here. Um, but with Karen. Karen Gabriel, who is an elder with Quantum First Nation, but comes from the Halal First Nation near the area we know as Shemanus on Vancouver Island. Philip Adu, a Métis elder from Northern Alberta. Lynn Hayes, who teaches us about the Inuit, and she's a nook for herself in Yellowknife. Carmen McKay, Solo and Masculine First Nation. Denny Paquette, who's Métis, but most of her life in Alberta. And Cecilia Reefney, who's Asked uh, the Aboriginal history traces go back to the Isla First Nation in Northern British Columbia. And it's important that we highlight where they are from 
because the knowledge they carry is so based on place. And it's important to understand that our students here are very diverse. We don't have students just from the local nation. They are from all over, and in some cases, they don't know where they are from. And so they are able to gain cultural teachings from all over the province and all over the nation to help them get a better understanding. The third piece in terms of indigenous knowledge that I want to share tonight is our work around language and culture and how vital language is. If we go back to Orange Shirt Day and the reflections of Orange Shirt Day, we know that one of the uh, Part two, it was to take away language that they forced those students who went that they had to speak English, that they lost their language. And there was a reason for that. And it's that the language holds power, it holds meaning, it holds culture, it holds all of that. I'll talk about that in a second. I'm ahead of myself. But there's vital information, vital sense of being within language. And here we go. I want to honor the work of Sesmalot Kern Gabriel, who has worked hard to establish our Hunkaminum language classes at the Dorothy Peacock in Fort Langley Elementary. And it's something we were able to continue in spite of the cohort system and everything going on. We are still able to have her go and share the language at Dorothy Peacock in Fort Langley. But we are also so tremendously lucky to have. Aboriginal support workers who are willing to take the next step forward and when they're working with their kids to teach their language that they have learned to those kids. And so we have Hunkaminam down the river dialect being taught. We have Kalkavalam being taught, Cree being taught to kids in 10 different schools spanning elementary through middle to secondary. And in some cases, this is being taught not only to Indigenous students, but also non-Indigenous students as a community thing to do. And I also need to once again thank Fern, Sesplot, Fern Gabriel, Wayne, Luke Dandran, and Anthony Biondi, who three amazing people who came together during the time of COVID to say, how can we pivot so to speak, and bring language out to the students at a time when they can't come for in-class instruction. How can we get it in the community at a time where we can't come together? And Luke, with all of his filming abilities, although he always filmed the wrong way, and now it's all in heart, he said he's going to do it to make you angry. And Fern, with her language and empathy, with an incredible understanding of website but also a passion for language came together to build this learning company and website that you can find on our district page under the Aboriginal program where you can go and learn how to count, how to say happy birthday, how to greet people, how to ask where they're from. To just do some fun activities including learning how to wash your hands with fur. <laughs> And it's these types of things we have continued to do, and it's because of the importance of language. It needs to understand that culture is imbued within the language, and that language and culture are tied together to the land, and that language, culture, and identity are all interconnected, meaning all of that's tied to the land. And the land holds the knowledge. And the knowledge is therefore in the language. And also, as Fern has said to me before, language is healing. And then this is why we do what we do. And with that in mind, we were able to continue uh, an endeavor that started with the work of the Aboriginal program when Mike Morgan was there. For those of you not in attendance tonight, we have pictures of the words that are now on our board. And uh, I will explain what these words mean. I know Trustee Ross is very excited to find out. <laughs> but I have brought through video Sasquatch Fern Gabriel, who's going to share with us the pronunciations of these words. Now, a couple things to point out. 
the words on the, if you're facing the wall or facing the picture, the words to the left are the Hunkaminam words. They are down river dialects, so that's why they are to the west. The ones on the right are the Hunkaminam words, which is the up river dialect. And that is why they're there. So these two sets of words you're looking at on each side are actually two different dialects of words in the case of this And so our first set is around mission, many commission. Uh, left turn. For those, and there's a second video coming for the other word, so hopefully that will work. But if you didn't hear the first word here is Yaisal. You can pronounce it after me, Yaisal. Yaisal. And the second word is Skeko Yois. Skeko Yois. Skeko Yois. Skeko Yois. And those two words, Yaisko means working together, which is the name given to our Aboriginal Education Advisory Committee. Skeko Yois literally translates to together working. So they basically mean the same thing as working together. The other word, see how this goes. Once again, Ankaminam. To the left, and you'll notice the Hunkaminams, the Hunkaminam language uses a lot of N's, there's no L's, and Halkamalam has L's, no N. There's one way to tell the difference when you're listening. So we'll try this again with friends. You got to hear a burn there. So the first word is not sama. Not sama. Not sama. Not sama. Not sama. Not sama. And the other word is lot sama. Lot sama. Lot sama. Lot sama. Lot sama. And what these words are, the best way I've heard it described is this idea of one heart, one mind. So it's the interconnection of the heart with the mind, but it's also done in a group. So it's not just an individual activity. It is coming together to an understanding through consensus building, through listening deeply, and seeking first to understand. And so with that in mind, and understanding that by putting the language up here, we have a duty to do our best to live up to it and try that. And that is reconciliation. That if we go back to the definition of reconciliation, reconciliation from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is about establishing and maintaining a mutually respectful relationship between Aboriginal and non Aboriginal peoples in this country. And unfortunately, we don't have to look very far to understand what happens when there isn't that mutual respect. And it takes, and I'm not gonna put you on the spot, I'm not gonna make this political, but I'm going to say, understand what's happening to the Mi'kmaq Nation. And understand everything that's going on and reflect on how that makes you feel. And that will give you a great understanding as to where you are in the journey. And it's fine if you're not there yet, or you're not sure how you feel, or you're really not sure. That's okay. But please start the journey with us. 
That's the important piece. And so in order for this to happen, that mutual relationship to be built, we need to be aware of the past, which we do through our reflections on Orange Shirt Day, which we do through our teachings to students about residential schools, an acknowledgement of the harm that has been inflicted, which we do through our teachings around the missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls, that we do when we talk about land and treaties and the development of Canada, that we look at when we talk about structural racism within this country. And then the next piece is the atonement and the action to change behavior. And how are we going to do that? A lot of people will look to different frameworks. And as I was thinking about it and talking about it with my team, with the team, you know, we thought about in terms of, of scope. You have the TRC 94 calls to action that covers all of Canada. And in those 94 calls, there are some directed at education. And most of them, even the education ones, are either directed at levels of government, churches, health organizations, businesses, the greater good, you know, the greater pieces. And the work that needs to be undertaken is regarding the work of governments, ministers of education, ministers of different uh, departments. And that a lot of people will sometimes view reconciliation as starting from there and flowing down into the community where we have our enhancement agreement. And that then in the enhancement agreement, the work that's done there will then flow down to the individual. And that will guide the individual to the work that needs to be done. And I would say I completely disagree that the work needs to start with you. Each of us has work to do. And that work together, whether it be as trustees, as leadership, as district staff, as school staff, is working together to meet the goals of the Aboriginal Education Enhancement Agreement, working together with our community partners to ensure success and equity for our Indigenous students. And that as we continue to do this work and build better students, more educated students in the ways of the world, in the shared history, that they will go out there and they will push for those 94 calls to action to be met. And one of the things I struggle with around the calls to action, and this is my honest, my issue around the struggle, is that within there, there are often times where it says, well, this hasn't been met because it hasn't been met across Canada. But we need to go back to the BC Tripartite Education Agreement to understand that we here in BC have done a tremendous amount of work between federal, provincial, and district to meet the needs of our students and to meet some of those calls to action. And we here are doing good work around it. So I think really how I view it is not so much as a tiered triangle, but really with us at the heart of that work. In the green, it's all of us individually doing the work. And from that, that work will spread out and will support the enhancement agreement. And that work, as I said, will then support the calls to action. And so if we're saying reconciliation really does start with us individually, there's really kind of a cyclical flow to it or an interactive flow between these three parts. It's do you understand your own worldview? Lori Villeneuve, who's an Aboriginal worldviews and perspectives department head at HD Stafford, always shares when we're talking about the work we do around Aboriginal worldview, she says, the most important thing I think is first for some of us to understand we have our own worldview and to understand what that is. And if we can't understand our own worldview, how can we ever understand that as somebody else? And so to make sure that we do reflect upon our own worldview. And from that, how do we learn more and more about the shared history? How do we learn more about what has happened in the past, but what continues to happen here because 
of what has happened in the colonialism of the 150 years plus of Canada. And so, as actions towards that, and to help all of us start a journey, we've shared two resources with you. And these resources are designed for two parts. We have 21 things you may not know about the Indian Act, and whether you've read it or not. Wonderful book. Started out as a blog post by Bob Joseph, and he's turned it into a book. And this speaks to the head. This speaks to the learning that we need to do at an intellectual level around some of the history. The other book that we share there is The Project of Heart. And the project of heart, as it's named, is to speak to the heart. And one of the key things to understand here is that whether we look at how that project came to be or the content within that book, it is heavily Langley oriented. We have staff here who worked hard to put it together. We have other staff who shared their stories, who were willing to have their pictures taken to do work around that. And if you go to that website below at bctf.ca slash hidden history, you can access that project of heart as a PDF booklet, ebook. But there's also a one uh, an electronic resource page where in the booklet itself on every tile, you could click on it and it would take you to a link or to further information. And so that e-resource page there will be there to, to give you further information. So as I said, I think if we go back to these words, this is what we are here to do as leadership and as this, all of us working together, coming to one heart, one mind, so that we can help support our students. And I will leave you with this thought, and this came to me as, not my thought, but it came to me as I was looking through the pictures and the student at Alder Grove Community Secondary have posted this up on the wall, and I think this hits everything clearly. Is that when it comes to reconciliation, we need you to care about knowing more, even when you think you've heard it a thousand times. Listen, hear, learn. There is healing in the telling of our stories, and reconciliation is in the willingness to learn and to listen. So I thank you for your time tonight. All my words. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we um, can start off by um, saying on the floor that the Board of Education received an update on the Civil Reconciliation Act. Reconciliation Act is a chart of the United States Supreme Court. That's the State of the Holy Spirit Church Office. Thank you so much. This wonderful report. I thank you that there's two for the life of the state. So I'm going to go to the first as, um, our, as our yellow call representative, and then I have a trustee for the turn, and next one is Lisa, and next one is Lisa. And after that, uh, I'll hand it off to my next one. Ross, uh, I'll take names as we go. Okay, uh, go ahead, Trustee Brown. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Your work, your leadership, your humanity comes across with incredible humility. Your heart to serve and um, follow is profound. And I'm honored to work with you alongside you on the night of Washington Day. And the good work that's being done is rich and it's complex. And of course, it's done, and I don't know if it's ever been done. But you've given us such a beautiful overview today about the, the commitment that this district has made and starting to talk about how well you are doing so many levels next to the end of what we've done. And I thank you for our people and our leadership, and I especially thank our community that comes through the guys of for offering their stories and the journey and opening up the vulnerability that 
help in this journey that is for all to me. I think it, it's important to deliberate that the, the 94 calls to action, while they are directed at government and they are lofty, they're still very achievable. And they're achievable through the, the pressure of, of people to uh, I think, you know, in terms of what's really funded or directed towards education, there is one of resources and the development of learning opportunities and experiences for students. And I think that's one that our district just highlighted the part of your home. Uh, I think the very interesting thing is our enhancement agreement, which uh, is up for renewal, and we're, we're looking at a process of that, have contains within it a number of similar things to what's in Niagara Falls Act. So uh, really around committing to uh, learning the past, learning the ongoing uh, results of the trauma that was uh, a result of the residential schools. And uh, I would challenge anyone to continue on that journey. I think like that last slide said, too often I read a book and I learn. And I walk away. So I would challenge all of you to continue to do your there are a tremendous number of books if you haven't read Seven Fall and Feather by Fanny Clay, I would highly recommend if you want an understanding of the relationship between uh, Indigenous and non Indigenous communities and the results of policing efforts within that. There's also one by Jennifer McDermott called The Highway of Fear, which I'm reading right now. This is another powerful example and closer to the week, obviously, said in DC. I think the learning needs to happen at all times. An understanding, an understanding and a reflection upon the fact that what we see currently happening in the United States of America is not just an American problem. And that quite easily the easiest thing you can do is replace black with indigenous here in Canada when we've got the very same result. You know, we continue to have First Nations on drinking uh, or boil water by the we continue to see inequities within our system. And so I challenge all of you to be a part of it and continue your learning that way. I challenge you to, to look at in terms of how you represent the community and how you can push municipal government. How you can for yourself, you know, and Suzanne shares, and Carson Thoreau shares her own as she's on her own journey. We're all on our journey in a different way. So where are we and how are we moving it forward? So I encourage you that no matter where you are on the journey, you can move it forward. If you don't know a lot, see me, find resources. If you know a lot and want to know about the more, find Continue to do that. I would also encourage you to go back to these two sets of work. We are here, we are together, come to one heart of the mind. And how do we do that? It's difficult work. It is not easy work. And we are at that road with reconciliation right now. Reconciliation can be really easy to do things like land acknowledgments and things. It's the easiest thing we can do. But you see what happens back east. You see what happens when we have stewards of the land and to speak to the land and protect the land. When that takes away someone's ability to earn their work living, all of a sudden reconciliation was out the window and it's not a word to the problem. So we try to encourage everybody to learn and to move our learning forward. And, and how is it that, you know, that, that I started with people of our generation who didn't get an opportunity to learn the truth? How are we learning it? Because it's not fine to, to sit back anymore and say, well, I didn't know. How was I supposed to know that you That's your problem. I figured that out. Which I didn't do. Not a challenge. Thank you very much. And that's a big and it's actually your all. It's going to be a heavy, hard talk. So thank you. Yeah. You're gracious with your words and time. And I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to bring our guest to the end of the session. You have to solve questions.
said all this time, but now I have to stand schools I've been at in terms of lit circles that are being done and the opportunities for choice for students. It's really through lit circles where a lot of schools were able to bring in other novels that students could choose to read that where they could finally see themselves. It wasn't let's all sit down and read Lord of the Flies. Let's all read Animal Farm. You all read that in grade nine, I think. Right. And and it's not to say that these aren't valuable no, uh, novels where, where things could be learned from them. But I think for our students to be able to see themselves, it's, it's a matter of not so much of finding the resources. It's a matter of taking the time to really put the, the work in to determine if it's an authentic voice. Uh, we have a tendency sometimes to, and understanding within Indigenous teachings that because they are based on the land, it's important to recognize that simply taking a book that centers itself in Nova Scotia doesn't necessarily allow a student here to see themselves. An activity that works well in the prairies may not work well for a lot of students here, and it may not have meaning because it doesn't come from here. And so for our staff, I think the learning journey is, is understanding how you go about finding those authentic resources. How is it that, that you do that? And, and 
I think one of the most powerful things I've seen um, in the last year, and it's continuing this year, is our Learning Through Stories professional development for teachers. And last year they were doing, a, it's essentially a book club with some teachings that go with it, and, and they would read books in different groups um, and, and then come together and share, and they would have teachings that go along with that around storytelling, around literature, that they could take back to their classrooms. And it was in such high demand, we had groups of staff from schools coming together to build off of that. And we've had to, you know, obviously pivot it into a, a more virtual setting. But once again, it was tremendously well received with people wanting to be a part of it. And I always feel terrible because I try to read the books. I do. I never get it done, right? I don't know how Ford reads so many books. I honestly don't. He is, I wish I had that skill. And um, and I, I would I would say, okay, you know, I've gone on a bit of a tangent here, but maybe that's part of the reconciliation too is to ask yourself who are you reading from so when you go to read how have you brought authentic indigenous voices in how have you taken the time uh, i actually having not done summer school this summer had all this time to read and i read a bunch of books and uh, taking in work by thomas king um, by Alicia Elliott and, and others who shared their stories, some based here, some based others in other places. But how are you bringing an indigenous voice into your own life and who are you reading on TV? Who are you giving time to? There's a tremendous series. If you haven't seen it yet, Trickster based off of Eden Robinson's book, Son of a Trickster on CBC. They actually allow swearing. It's unbelievable, CBC. But the, the series is, is unbelievable and it has a different worldview. So are you giving an opportunity to, to learn from that and see that within your entertainment world? And, and that goes not only for, for indigenous people, but um, you know, how are we doing that for, for our BIPOC community and giving them a, a voice in, and in our own lives and taking that opportunity to learn from their voice? Yes, just being mindful of the time and other items Unless, wait, just a minute. Wilson, did I miss you? Do you have any, so, yeah, so did you have any, no, it's fine, okay. Is there anybody, Trustee Ward, did you have anything you want to say before I go to us? No? Okay, so very last speaker, and then we'll check it out, and where's the next speaker? So my other one, I was hoping you would talk about history and social studies and, and, and the textbooks that were, like if you look at 15 years ago and what you're seeing now in school, it's just morphed, it's changed, and it's coming from such such a different place. Like it used to be all about content and explorers, and now it's actually written often firsthand from the indigenous perspective. So uh, I just how you feel about that, or, or do you see, because that to me has been the profound change that we've seen in, in the humanities. Yeah, I, I would say that in the, within the humanities is where some of our greatest work and greatest efforts have come. Um, and it's because in the humanities is where we often share our history. Uh, and so if, if there isn't good teaching happening there and of the shared history, we're, we're just going to replicate the same thing. Um, and so, I mean, the work we have done to, to review online courses, to review textbooks and resources, to really take time to, um, you know, where it used to be, probably in social studies, I don't know, this is how I experienced it. You know, when you go, I could think back to my high school experience, here's your social studies textbook, you're gonna use this for this study period, and then oh, you hand it in, and then it's probably a geography textbook, and then it's this one, and everybody uses the same ones through. And it's the one core text, and that's all you base it off of. I think what we've seen now from so many people is the use of an anchor text with many other uh, opportunities to learn so that you get all voices and all perspectives and it's really teaching students how do we have that perspective how are we able to review our own worldview so that we can see somebody else's and and then move forward together from that and really center everyone's voice so that it's heard and not just one voice because they always ask you know when we talk about you taking history well whose history are we telling 
and we need to do a better job of ensuring that. And I think our, our teachers are doing a fabulous job of that. to everyone for their questions and comments and thank you for the presentation and it was very moving and wonderful to see all the hard work that's going on and the work of the art cell which is so important so thank you very much all right so trustees we have a, a motion which is moved and seconded so it is a motion uh, that the board of education receives the update on truth and reconciliation for information that's presented i do not have any more speakers so all those in favor No? Okay, the motion is carried. You're now on to item 7.2, which is the first of three motions related to board policies and district administrative procedures. The first item is the notice of motion, and we'll get a motion on the floor, and then I will see if the secretary treasurer has anything to add. So the motion is that the Board of Education serves notice of motion to the district's education community and its education partner groups, that it intends to rescind all current board policies, regulations, and administrative procedures effective December 15th, 2020. So that's the first motion. So could I please get a mover for that? Moved by Vice Chair Todd. A seconder, please. Seconder, uh, seconded by Trustee Ross. So it is moved and seconded. Um, Secretary Treasurer, do you have anything on this? Uh, or sorry, Superintendent. No, this is, uh, I'll just speak very briefly, actually, this is your chance. We've already wrestled with this for months as a staff and as trustees. I, I really probably just from a public perspective, just so they understand, um, the policies and amend procedures that this district has are grossly outdated. <laughs> and there's stuff in both areas that, quite frankly, uh, <laughs> conditions that don't exist anymore, language that needs to be changed, uh, admin procedures policies that need to be omitted, added, so on and so forth. And to take a task on like that is incredibly daunting. That's why most trustees in this province wouldn't. So I do appreciate the, the work that has been, um, that has involved all of you in terms of trying to go down this road. What we're putting out to you tonight, is it perfect? Not a chance. Uh, it's massive. This is a massive undertaking. Uh, it is certainly a, an incredible, <laughs> a monumental leap forward in improvement over what we currently have. But I, I guess what I'd want to reassure trustees and I'd want to reassure our public is that while we're trying to kind of get this new set of admin procedures and policies in place, uh, that that doesn't mean that they're fixed. There will always be work. That, that's the work that you, uh, that many of you actually really thrive on is how many of you are passionate about policy, how many are making sure that we get processes right to make sure that the work that I do certainly lands in my domain. And that, that's why we have a board policy committee. And we've had that in limbo for quite frankly, far too long because we've been kind of stuck kind of right now in transition of weeks. What are we gonna do next? And I'd like to get onto that work. Uh, I'd like to see us be able to sit down and continue to refine going forward, not only for this year, but in many years going forward, because additions will continue, deletions will certainly exist, and language will need to change. So I, I wanted to make sure that assurance is there because I think all of you would look at this package again, very daunting, and we'll have questions on it and have improvements that need to be made and refined. Totally get it, totally understandable. So uh, I wanted to make sure I know Trustee Wilson, this is certainly dear to your heart too, and you wanted more time than five minutes to discuss it. I apologize, this went longer, but what an emotional topic and, and really following that to this is, is in itself problematic. However, you do deserve that opportunity. And so that's why we only put the two items on tonight. So uh, take the time you need, put it out there. What, but what staff need right now is direction. We need to know what we're gonna do next. And that's really what we're seeking tonight with all three of these motions. I don't know to our secretary treasurer whether there's anything I've missed or need to add, but otherwise the intent was to let you be able to go through it. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, I would like to call for a separate vote on policy three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and eighteen. Thank you, um, Ms. Wilson. Uh, that motion, uh, the motion before the assembly, is to serve notice of motion that we are intending to rescind all current board policies, regulations, administrative procedures. You would be asking likely for a motion for consideration of paragraph or a seriatim, and that would be 
other order because the motion that you're asking for a separate vote on is serving motion to rescind them and not serving motion to, um, you know, like the motion is actually serving notice of motion. So it would be out of order in that case. They can't be considered in seriatim. Okay. Um, actually, I am referring to Robert's Rules, page 274. 274, yeah. So you're looking for a division, right? No. So motions that must be divided on demand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a series of independent resolutions or main motions dealing with different subjects is offered in one motion. In such a case, one or more of the several resolutions must receive separate consideration and vote at the request of a single member. And the motion for division of a question is not used. Such a demand, uh, which should not be confused with provision of assembly, mm -hmm. but it's for voting, can be made even when another has the floor and we say, Chair, I call for a separate vote on policy, blah, blah, blah. This demand must be asserted before the question on adopting the series has actually been put to vote. So I still find your request to be out of order because they're not individual resolutions. The package is actually being considered to vote for notice of motion. And so if you wanted to divide them, it would have to have a different motion. So you're able to appeal the decision of the chair? I would like to so appeal the decision. You'd like to of the appeal chair. the decision of the chair. There is a process for that. So um, what, how, what happens is you say, I appeal the decision of the chair. The appeal requires a seconder. Seconder on the appeal. So seconded by Trustee Coburn. And then what happens is the chair speaks first, and then you may speak. And then if there's anybody wants to add something, they can add something. And then the chair speaks last. And then there's a vote of whether the decision of the chair is sustained. So I've called the motion out of order. I've said the motion doesn't apply in that because this is a motion to serve notice to the community that we intend to repeal. So uh, that is my decision for that. They, they are very specific motions to put out that we're receiving all board policies and replacing them. So as a result of that, it's impossible to vote on them in seriatim or even vote on them separately because there isn't something else to replace them in their package. So you can vote against it. You can vote against serving no motion, but you can't vote individually on it. So that's my reason for that. You may speak now, Trustee Wilson. Great. So yeah, I completely disagree and believe that Robert's Rules is very clear in the fact that they can be divided because in such a case as one or more or several resolutions must be received separately. So these are a series of independent policies. One may be regarding the actions of the chair and another may be regarding transportation. They are completely different. They can be separated and discussed individually as per Robert's rules in that order. That's really the only way they should be discussed. They can't be put as one package. There's far too much work and far too many policies to discuss them as a whole saying, I accept all or I accept nothing. That's why this rule is in Robert's rules. It is specifically there for this type of thing where people can vote individually and then at the end of that, the package will go as a whole and we will put it as notice of motion. And that's the way, the only way that it can be done. So um, I'm going to go to Vice Chair Todd, but I'd like to just point out um, an incorrect point, which is you actually can debate any of these resolutions. You're able to say, I do not want to see this package go out. I'd like to discuss policy, blah, blah, blah. I just did. Well, I'm just saying you can do that. You don't I need to that. pull them out and vote on them individually, which is what you're asking for. You're still allowed to speak against something that's in it, but we don't have a seriatim vote. Go ahead, Vice Chair. Resolution number two, not resolution number one. Resolution number one is basically saying rescinding the previous policies. So when you want to pull out policy three, six, nine, and seven, you're actually talking about resolution number two, not resolution number one. So that's why I feel that it's baseless. Um, so 
point of um, this is an appeal to of the chair's decision. Yeah, so I'm 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 trying. Um, Vice Chair Todd said something interesting. Um, I'm hoping through the chair that um, he can elaborate a little on that because I think there might be something there. So through the chair to Vice Chair Todd, are you suggesting that what Trustee Wilson is asking is to talk about policies that are no longer relative because we're pulling them back, but instead those policies would be in motion to which would be the ones we would then intend to approve and that should she move her motion to the second resolution that it would make more sense is I'm just looking for clarification. I don't see any more speakers on the appeal of the chair's decision that the motion is out of order. So um, the question now, and once again, whether it's old policies being pulled out or new policies going in, you have the ability to debate them tonight, but we're not voting on them individually. So you can speak to them. You can speak to ones coming out or you can speak to ones going in. You have every right to speak to those, but we're not voting on them serially. You have your option during debate to speak to them. Um, I've got uh, trust, um, Trustee Pearl and then Trustee um, Wilson and then we need to close because right now we're speaking to the appeal of my decision of the motion being out of order. All right. I'm just trying to develop some clarity in my head to understand what we're doing here. We're asking for Pull the motions to look at them to discuss or pull them completely. Help me understand your intent so I, I feel like I, I'm getting lost in the conversation. But I do believe after hearing this debate that it's probably more in line with the second motion where we're putting the policies in place. Although if we're debating the entire thing at once, then it would come now. But if we're going to do each section separately, then I will just. Consider them each separately, but you've listed some out of order and I've given my reasons why. Um, that is for you. You have appealed my decision on number 7.2, which is board policies, district administrative procedures, that the board serves notice of motion to the district education community and its education groups that it intends to rescind all of the current policies, regulations, and administrative procedures effective December 15th, 2020. You have used um, Robert's Rules of Order that motions that must be divided on demand are in are sometimes a series of independent resolutions, which this is not a series of independent resolutions. This is one motion to serve no motion so that this section doesn't apply. I have called that out of order on this one. So I need to know if my decision that it's out of order will be sustained, which means you agree with me as chair that the motion is out of order. So that's what we're calling right now. So all those in favor to sustain my decision will stand. Okay, all right, so that's great. So my decision that was out of order is sustained. So the motion that is out going out, going back now to the main motion, that is moved by Vice Chair um, Todd and a seconded by Trustee Ross is that the Board of Education serves notice of motion to the district education community and its education partner groups that intends to rescind all of its current policies, regulations, and administrative procedures December 15th, 2020. That would be effective then. So that motion has been moved and seconded. Is there anybody that would like to speak to that motion? Okay, I do not have any speakers on that. So all those in favor of serving notice of motion on that. Any opposed? Okay, uh, Coburn and Wilson opposed. So we have dispensed with 7-2. We are now going to item number seven. 
point two, number two, so A, I guess we're on to B now, that the Board of Education serves notice of motion to the district's education community and its education partner groups that intends to approve the board policy handbook effective December 15th, 2020. Could I please get a mover for that? Moved by Trustee Ross, seconded by Vice Chair Todd. Um, Okay, so we are now opening debate on that. Trustee Wilson. Yes, Madam Chair, I call for a separate vote on policy 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, and 18 of the board policy handbook. So once again, I will call that motion out of order, which you can appeal the decision. The reason why I'm calling the motion out of order is that this is related to a series of independent resolutions on a main motion. I do not see this as being a set of independent resolutions. We are approving the board policy handbook. And as a result of that, it's not a series of independent resolutions. We are serving notice also. So there's no division of the motion itself. And we are putting this out for comment to the public on individual resolutions. And you as a trustee, as every other trustee sitting here, has the ability to debate every single item in here you can say hey we're putting this out for notice of motion but i'd like to express my concerns with these policies and the question before the assembly today is whether they are ready to serve notice of motion to the community or not so you're able to speak to every single thing that's in there but it's considered as one package because it's replacing the old package with the new package and if there are concerns with the policies, you can talk about them and the board can decide to serve notice or not, or decide to later send the item to policy. So that's my decision. So you can appeal the decision of the chair for this. Okay, so for the same reasons I just stated, um, I believe, oh yeah, sorry, second year on the appeal, seconded by Trustee Coburn. Um, for the reasons I just stated that it's out of order, I believe that um, the package is to be considered as one package, but trustees have the opportunity to have robust debate on the package going out. But the motion itself goes out as one motion to repeal and replace. You now, Trustee Wilson, may speak to us. Great. Thank you so much for that. Um, I believe this is exactly several resolutions that are independent of each other. Each policy is independent of the other policy. To wrap them all in one package and have one vote is totally negating Robert's rules that by a single member, you can ask for this. And I am asking for policy three, four, five, six, seven, nine, and 18 to be called in a separate vote because they are very independent of each other and they are all falling under one motion. So it is exactly what that rule is for. I appreciate where you're going with this uh, as seeing them as separate uh, resolutions. The question that I would have uh, maybe for discussion here is what in fact constitutes a resolution? Having a number of items listed as policies and calling them separate resolutions, and I, I get the heart and I appreciate where you're going, but um, I don't know. It seems to me it still falls under an individual resolution, but if somebody can provide some uh, clarity with respect to that word as it relates to all or as um, governance, um, Robert's rules. Absolutely. So a resolution under Robert's rules of order is a main motion that needs to be expressed formally in writing to attach to a special level of importance. So it's a consideration of a main motion. We do not have however many books there are in there and pulling two or three out to speak to individually is not a resolution. So my, the question before the assembly is whether you will sustain the decision of the chair, agree with the decision of the chair that the motion is out of order. So that's what we're speaking to right now. Are any speakers thoughts? Trustee Coburn. Thank you, chair. Um, uh, so I am going to support the, the um, challenge because I uh, I don't see it as one full resolution. I do see it as a series of independent policies that can stand or fall on their own. And I think in the name of moving forward, 
Um, if we're going to set out a whole book, we're either 100% comfortable with it or we're not. Or the alternative is to pull out some and then move forward with what we already have. I don't think that Trustee Wilson's comments are misinterpreted. I think her interpretation of Robert's rules is actually bang on. And I think that there would be no harm in pulling these ones out so we can work more on them so that everybody at the table is comfortable. Trustee Ross. Uh, appreciate the comments, um, always. Um, I'm supporting the chair. Um, when I look at uh, what we're trying to achieve tonight, we need to solve this issue. We do need to have policy. And uh, so all we're doing is going out to the public and saying, hey, we've got two months to look at it. Come back, give us your thoughts. At that point, December 15th, will come back to us. At that point, uh, Trustee Wilson can bring back three, four, five, six, seven, and eighteen, nine, three, nine. At that point, and say, I want to look at each one of these and send them to the policy committee because I'm not happy with them for whatever reason. But it's not something we should be doing tonight. I want to get this done. We need to get moved forward, and I'm going to be supporting the chair. Thank you. So back to the motion. So we're 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 mindful once again of time. It's 8:39. I have Trustee Crow. Once again, we're speaking to whether or not the decision will be sustained of the chair. Trustee, I've spoken. Trustee Wilson spoken. Every other person gets one time to speak. We then vote. I speak one more time, and we vote on whether the decision is sustained. And the decision is that this is one resolution, which is written right there. You know, and while the resolution has a written motion adopted by a deliberative body, but you can debate the content of that motion, which is the policy book, whether that decision as a chair will be sustained or not. Trustee Pro. To the chair. Um, so what I need to understand going forward in in um, in reflection of what Trustee Wilson is communicating is I'm looking for a confirmation, an assurance, a reaffirmation, what have you, leading off of Trustee Ross's statement that recognizing that the motion is to move this document forward. So this is the document we're looking at. Um, to move that forward because there's antiquated policies in there that harm our community of diversity and inclusion and our students. I get that. I get those conversations are there that we need to get moving forward. We need to protect our students, protect our staff, and make sure that they're empowered so that we don't have situations which were like we saw before. However, my question is, in light of the policies that she's citing, without a doubt, I have a policy which you guys, this table is well aware of, policy 7300, to policy 532. Um, to admin procedure, which is policy on physical restraint seclusion as it stands right now, that these policies will have the opportunity unequivocally to be pulled if they're called on to be amended and worked on including the admin so um thank you trustee pro once again we're, we're just i'll sort of answer that within this but once again we're, we're debating whether or not my decision will stand but i understand that that is something that you're you're connecting because of making the decision to appeal the chair that's a concern you have so just to highlight exactly when Trustee Wilson's motion would be in order. We see these sometimes, um, and we've actually had some of these come to the board before, and one of us would have been in, in um, would have been fine to consider them, would be if there was like a repeal and replace. So if the motion that was brought to us by staff was that the Board of Education serves notice a motion that we are going to rescind all board policies and replace them, um, the new board policy handbook, and administrative procedures. If those three resolutions, because we're voting on them in independently right now, were one resolution, those would be resolutions that you would say, I'd like to vote on this, this, and this, but not, but, but not have them as one motion. Repeal and replace. 
you could vote to repeal and vote to replace, but having them together, you could ask for that under this section of Robert's rules. Um, of course, as we've been told before and have been told by staff continuously, we are able to send any motion we want back to policy. And if we see something that's an admin procedure and we want it to be policy, we send it to policy committee. That's our purview as a board. We can bring anything we want into policy. Good. Okay, but we can't speak. We, um, let's call it questions. Actually, it's a separate motion too, and have to have two thirds vote. You will get a chance to ask your next question, which I can anticipate as soon as we get onto this uh, that next item. So the decision is whether my call as chair that this item is out of order um, will be sustained. Will my decision be sustained? All those in favor of sustaining the board chair's decision. And the opposed. Coburn and Wilson opposed the decision the chair is sustained. We now have a motion that the Board of Education serves notice of motion to the district's education community and its education partner groups that it intends to approve the board policy handbook effective December 15th, 2020. It has been moved by Trustee Ross and seconded by Vice Chair Todd. We are now going to speak to the main motion. Okay, so I have a speaker's list. I have Trustee Wilson. I have Trustee Coburn. I have, sorry? Trustee Pro, um, are you good? I did, I did defer your question to this, so you would actually have precedence to speak first. Um, would you like that or would you like to go third? Okay, and then we'll go Wilson and then Coburn if that's okay. All right, all right. Sorry, I'm just going to clear and then. So to the chair, what? I, so I would just want to be. So I, I don't know if I'm hearing what I, I need to hear or, or what have you. So the admit, something that goes to admin procedures. Uh, so i.e. policy 7300, which will turn to pol uh, admin procedure 354. Uh, will have the ability to be called on by trustees to have language change or whatever um, in a motion to do so. Is that correct? Or is that completely like removed from us? Because the reason why I'm asking this qualification is when I listen to Trustee Wilson, I hear I hear some of that um, concern being present. And I don't know if that's exactly what I'm hearing, Trustee Wilson, through the chair. Um, but without a doubt, I, I want to ensure we have that assurance that the admin procedures, once we move this forward, we can pull back if we need to, that I hear it, the public hears it, that we're demonstrating that, that pause to listen and go, what, where are we going in this? Overruled, didn't we? And then did we move to the second? So. Uh, Trustee Wilson, uh, we had a mover and a second. Yes. And then um, what happened was Trustee Wilson called point yes. of order, and then she challenged the yes. chair, and my decision was sustained. Okay. And, and we've now gone back to the motion that's moved to second. second motion. We've already got the second motion. It's not a second motion, it's the main motion. We've gone back to our main motion that the Board of Education. Which is number two, yes. not number three. Yeah, we're still. We were just talking about administrative procedures in this right. conversation, but should we still not be on policy? Right. So, uh, Trustee Cobra, what I hear Trustee Pro saying is to vote on number two. She needs to understand how, and please interrupt me if I'm correct, Trustee Pro, okay. how one could decide they wanted somebody to be part of a policy book or if okay. they were upset about a policy, how they would deal with it. I just thought we had skipped two and moved to three. That's what I thought. I thought no, we, we are on two. A step. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry, Trustee Pro, can you can you clarify so that I can then, I um, either decide if I can answer it or if it's a question the Secretary Treasurer Superintendent has to do? Sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> I'm going to clear the screen. And now it's your go away. Okay, so my question is, is once a policy, because what this is doing is dividing policies uh, and what's making our responsibility and then essentially doing what needs to be done on many levels is equip our superintendent to do his job and, and create some accountability on our staff and him so that we have a mechanism to, to go downstream in a more effective manner. 
Um, so we're looking at pulling all the policies, combining them into a book like this, which is quite thick, um, removing from us, which we don't have the capacity to do effectively. I get that. My question is, once this policy 7300 moves into an admin procedure, when it's an admin procedure, do we have the ability to speak into it? Not to pull it back into a policy, but to pull it back and look at the language to adjust the admin procedure language. Or is it because it becomes an admin procedure, is it then hands off for us and for them to adjust? And then, so that's my question. Where Where's that dividing line? Because there's a potential for a double-edged sword to a certain degree, potentially. I don't know. But that's the question I want to look at. Um, once it becomes an admin procedure, and through the chair to maybe superintendent or to secretary, you might have the wisdom to clarify that because I think it'll follow it. information. Okay, so thank you, Trustee Pro. So I'm going to go to the Secretary Treasurer and then I have a few thoughts on. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, the point of having the two books is to distinguish the responsibility and the roles between uh, the board and what is the board's responsibility and what they control and what they can direct uh, and the superintendent and what he is responsible uh, for directing and what staff do. Um, because right now they're mixed in the way that we have our policy and in procedure and it, uh, and to be honest, sometimes lets the superintendent off the hook uh, because it's stuff that uh, the board has taken responsibility that they can't really uh, provide that responsibility. And I would use the example of your policy that you mentioned. Uh, it directs uh, the director of uh, that program to, to do certain things, which the board can't do. The board has one employee and that's the superintendent. Uh, so basically, you've taken responsibility in a policy for something that you have no hopes of ever taking responsibility for. To address how you can um, address concerns in the administrative procedures, because they are meant as information, because they are under the responsibility of the superintendent, it's through his, there's a couple of mechanisms for that. One being uh, through his performance. Uh, he is your employee, uh, and if there are things that you as a board are not seen or would like to see, uh, you can address that through him uh, during that time or at any point. Uh, there's also the ability for the board to be able to say that there is something in admin procedure that should be a board policy, as long as it is something that the board can actually functionally manage and be responsible for. So I think that's kind of the dividing line that we have had very blurred in this district for a very long time. We can do one more follow up and then I do have to just go to the rest of the speakers list. Which is why I'm parking on policy 7300. I have questions around that policy and some of the language in it. Um, I love that we're moving to a place where, because of this policy, that we're saying. Um, I'm just going to go to it, bear with me here. You know, the physical restraint is only exceptional in situations, uh, blah, 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 right? And then we talk about seclusion, which is my my, my big one, um, and, and that there's processes, that we're going to put processes in place. But if there's language that needs to be changed, do we get to go through the chair to whomever, uh, secretary, treasurer, say this language here, um, if, uh, sorry, if restraint is required more than once, they'll be started to review. Like, so there's, there's stuff in there that's happening more than once, for example, and I'm going, okay, we got to look at this from a social and emotional piece from coming forward. So I can give all my rationale, but I'm not going to, so I'm not debating the motion right now. My question is, how do we change the language if it needs to be done? Does that go through the superintendent and how do we actually activate that? Like, I'm not hearing what the process is. Okay, so um, just very quickly, succinctly, if a trustee is concerned about an admin procedure and the language within the admin procedure, my understanding is that that can be viewed as Going into a policy, or you can address it directly with the superintendent, ask questions. Examples include the performance review, 
and there are other me mechanisms. Is there a, a direct answer to that one for Trustee Pro? I'm not sure uh, if I can say it differently, maybe. Um, The, the way that the policies and procedures are done, the admin procedures are information purposes for trustees. It's not meant for them to define the wording. If they have issues with what is being done uh, by the superintendent through the admin procedures, you deal with it through his performance review and uh, direction of the board, like we do with every other item with the superintendent. Or if it is felt like it needs to be policy and that's something you control, then you always have the right to refer that to the policy committee to be turned into a board policy. So it would come back to board policy and uh, it would be looked at as a policy with a view of whether or not it um, would remain as an amendment procedure or go into policy, but you could analyze concerns at that point during whether or not it became a policy. Yeah, you yes. discuss whether the board wanted to make that a board policy instead of an amendment procedure. Right. And through that discussion, oftentimes concerns are raised. So we have um, for everybody here a uh, speakers list. We will in five minutes need to do a motion to extend the meeting by 20 minutes. Um, so we've had Trustee Pro, Trustee Ward. I thought, oh, can't read my own writing. Sorry, wrong W. Trustee Wilson. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I believe that there would have been an easy solution to Trustee Perot's um, comments there by just having her pull or have a separate vote on and then pull that admin procedure out or refer to it as the policy name that it was when we did our first vote there. But because we were overruled by the chair's decision, that's probably no longer an option. So I'm going to speak on the motion that we're on right now because I have a quite a few things to say. So if we look at policy three, it is service materials and equipment provided to trustees. I believe that we had a conversation when we made these policies that instead of it just saying an iPad, we would change item two to any technology required to fulfill their role, such as we have already seen that we've needed this extra um, computer for our team's meetings and limiting ourselves to just one device and naming it was um, a little bit sort of pigeonholed us so I don't know why that didn't appear in these and maybe it was I had in my notes that it, it was something we changed but obviously my notes could be wrong and then I'd like to add number three training on board governance including Robert's rules of order because I believe that is a service that should be provided to trustees when they come onto the board so since we're not voting on these separately I'm not sure what we will do if anybody agrees with changing these because now we'll have to go through a lengthy process where we bring them to policy committee where we could have easily changed each one tonight. Trustee Wilson, are you speaking to the motion, please? Yes, please so policy going. four. Um, I have in my notes that Trustee Ward brought up a very significant point when we did these that we should use Canadian spelling and there are words in this policy like behavior that doesn't have the U in it. So we could have voted to quickly change that, but now we can't. And also I have that we crossed out or struck out number 13 on policy four, um, but it appears back in here. So I'm not sure why that is. And then when we move to policy five, the role of the board chair, um, in the first paragraph, it has that we will basically call for an election subsequently at the midpoint of the board term of office. The board shall elect one of its members to serve as board chair or hold the office at the pleasure of the board. And as we've seen, Section 67 of the School Act overrides this um, policy. And I believe that we shouldn't have policies that contradict each other. So that should just be removed and people can follow the School Act and call for an election whenever they like because obviously we don't follow that policy. So also there is number two to chair that the chair will chair all public and closed board meetings. So I believe that that is in contradiction to 
policy on vice chair 6.2 where the vice chair um, chairs are in camera meetings which I believe closed is referring to but we can't vote on that now so I'll move on to policy six um, the vice chair it says that we will have an election at the inaugural meeting and then an annual at each annual meeting but as we've seen according to the school act we can have one whenever we want so I don't think we should have policies that contradict the school act and also there is vice number two that the vice chair chair shall chair right our regular in camera meetings so that contradicts the other one about the chair during all meetings then I have also in policy seven there's another spot at 4.3 the chair shall preside at all meetings of the board yet we've just discussed that that is uh, the vice chair chairs are in camera meetings and then we have uh, yeah the same thing with 6.3 that the chair shall chair all regular and special meetings um, but our regular in camera and while regular in camera meetings shall be chaired by the vice chair so that's the one that's contradicted in those other ones and then we have 8.5 under that same policy um, it talks about the secretary treasurer being in charge of the minutes and then it lists the minutes shall be recorded at and 8.5.2 says type of meeting inaugural regular or special but it doesn't mention in camera and i'm feeling like he takes the minutes for those as well so because it's an exhaustive list and not examples i feel like we should include in camera in there also in my notes i had that we added a point to record agenda topics but that seems to have been left out of here but again we can't vote on that so and then number nine oh yes this one delegations um 9.1.2 persons or groups wishing to make a delegation to the board um oh no it's actually sorry 9.1.4 all requests from delegate delegations shall be submitted to the secretary treasurer who shall forward all such requests to the agenda setting committee i feel very strongly that it should say and be amended to say who shall forward all such requests to the board and the agenda setting committee because all throughout that it talks about making delegations to the board and people having a right to access the board and only two board members sit on the agenda setting committee so that is not the board so that policy i would like amended but we can't vote on that right now because people didn't want to do that so then we will move to the same policy uh, number 13 all 13.1 all trustees present at a meeting must vote um, this is superseded by the school act which we've been told on several occasions that trustees can abstain who are not in conflict so i would like that removed so that we don't so trustee wilson you do have the power because we did have and i'm just going to interrupt in a minute uh, for a minute, you do have the power to make a motion to refer this back for cleaning up. Like we've had several of these meetings and these haven't been raised. And where I've raised them, at not every... all of them. So yes, I have them all in my notes. Well, Trustee Wilson, would you like to move a motion to refer? I would love this? to move a motion to refer these um, to back to the. Um, we can refer them to the secretary treasurer for review and the agenda setting committee to put together another committee meeting to go through these remaining items again. Will it be a public meeting? Well, all of our committee meetings are technically public, Trustee Wilson. It's not public in the sense that they're open. We do our work in committee, but they're public in the sense that the meeting minutes are published, they're part of the package. So, well, I would appreciate any chance to work on these as a whole because there's yeah. far too much work to do. So Absolutely. I will so refer a motion them. to refer back to a committee meeting to make the changes you've identified. Seconded by Trustee Coburn. Any comments on that motion to refer? And then I will go to the Secretary Treasurer for comment. Sorry, Trustee Coburn. isn't quite as ready as everybody would like it to be 
Um, I myself have some significant concerns um, about where some things came from, but I would like to say to the chair um, to suggest that Marnie Wilson or Trustee Wilson has not brought this up and banged this drum over and over and over again is patently untrue as Trustee Wilson has argued this at public meetings. She has voiced over and over how uncomfortable this whole thing has made her and there's countless emails of her asking for this. So I urge you to perhaps reconsider the sentiment that this is the first time she's brought it up because it's not true. I respectfully disagree with you. Anybody else on the motion to refer uh, secretary treasurer? No, OK, so. Oh, sorry, Trustee Ward. Uh, I, Try again. So through the chair to, did I get it right this time? Okay. Through the chair to uh, Trustee Wilson and um, the rest of the trustees, I do think, I remember all those points. That, in fact, they're probably without exception. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, I think this is probably a good, maybe a good compromise, a good um, methodology to point out. So I uh, thank you for all that work to, to um, point them out. But I would, I would, with this motion. Okay, so we're going to vote on the motion to refer back to a committee through the Secretary Treasurer. Oh, yes, sorry. Uh, sorry, Vice Chair, I didn't see you on this. Go ahead. Okay, and again, I, I always look for the best intentions, and I know that uh, uh, Trustee Wilson is very thorough, and that's why you're the head of the policy <laughs> committee. Um, several of what you did point out you are correct. You, you did mention them in our meetings and, and, and yes, but when it comes to like an 85 page document, sometimes um, additions and omissions do occur. And, and, and some of it's kind of word smithing and, and that stuff. And typically that is not done in a public meeting as well. You know that we don't go and we analyze commas and that I've seen it happen, but it doesn't it doesn't typically it doesn't typically lead to a better place. Uh, as as our superintendent said, is this a perfect place? No. Policy committee will have its job, you know, its work plan for probably the next year or two, maybe going in, cleaning up some of the stuff that you pointed out that we need to work on. Not a problem, but that's why we have a policy committee to study almost clause by clause. But is this a better place than all the policies we had previously? Of course it is. And in this case, I think that your assertion that it's a flawed document and there are several things that you did raise in previous should not be in here. Therefore, we can't move forward with it is. I, I guess that's your opinion. I'll leave it there. I just was wondering if the superintendent could give us some direction as to, you know, if we were to put this back to uh, the policy committee, the motion says that we go back to policy, um, how that's going to make his life a uh, challenge or is it an issue for him at all? It's actually going back to a committee of the whole, not back to policy, um, is the motion uh, for some of the housekeeping items and some of the other things that have maybe not been clarified within it that Trustee Wilson's raised concerns about. Um, I Some of the items, like where there's a spelling error or whatever, does not need to go back for review. Trustee Wilson's raised a few concerns about things. Uh, so while I disagree with assertions related to the School Act, that you can have policy that governs it, but it can be changed by the School Act, there's nothing wrong with that. She might have, um, she has some other concerns about the fact that the word special was missing in front of motions. So she's looking to see if they can go back to community of the whole for the cleaning up in that area. Um, though some might argue that those inconsistencies that are related to um, small words that are missing would be a matter of housekeeping. And that would be a matter of trustees personal opinion on whether or not the document has a once over by the consultant one more time for house cleaning or housekeeping cleanup or whether it goes out as it is. Um, does either the secretary treasurer or superintendent want to speak to this? Um, just looking for direction. So if uh, what I need to know is, are we passing these recommendations 
and getting together to do uh, additional changes over the next 60 days in terms of um, the um, issues that um, Trustee Wilson has raised. Um, if that's the case, because, you know, again, I appreciate um, the lens in terms of, hey, if we've missed, missed the wording or missed the point, yeah, obviously we need to take uh, take care of those. In terms of where school act, um, you know, supersedes things, whether we want to exclude it. Throughout this province, some have both. We don't have to, but it's obviously more into conversation. I guess we're just, I'm just trying to figure out, is it going out to the public or not? Because if it's not, that's what, that's what Brian and I, we need to kind of know, are we saying no, it's not going out to the public? We'll continue to work on it here and eventually it'll get out to the public. That's where I need some clarity. That That's all. Just give us some clarity there. Glad to do what people want to do. I just need some clarity. That's so all. another option you're suggesting is that the package goes out to the public and then within the 60 days, the housekeeping items be cleaned up. That's one, that's one thing we can do. I, that's one just trying to kind of find out where we're at in the, in the process, that's all. So, and then if it's not referred, we go back to the main motion to serve notice of motion. And then after that to do the next item, we would need to extend the meeting by 20 minutes. Uh, so to the chair, um, for a point of clarification here, we cannot do both. Is that correct? Uh, uh, do this, refer this, as well as accept them. What, what you could do is you could um, vote to defeat the referral. We go back to the main motion, and you could then amend the motion that we serve notice of motion to the public and to ensure that the cleaning up is done in a committee. You could amend this this motion, the main motion again. Trustee Wilson. Oh, sorry, I had Trustee Ross, then Trustee oh. Wilson. I just want to see this go out to the public. Uh, it's 60 days. It gives us plenty of time to do some cleanup. But we need to get it out to the public so they can have a look at this. We've been looking at it for a couple of years now, so it's 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 wearing on me certainly. I'm certainly on staff, especially. So I would like to um, to see it move forward tonight. So I'll be supporting that. Thank you. So uh, last speaker is Trustee Wilson, and then we will vote on the referral. Yeah, I believe that once we refer it and we've worked on these, like some of them were some significant wordings to like the things that trustees receive or things like that, that we need to give 60 days notice to the public to when we give notice of motion that has to package has to be what they're seeing for 60 days. So I don't think we can have one and the other, although I would love this to be done quickly as well. I'm hoping maybe we could meet very quickly as a committee or however we're going to do that. But without the public having the 60 days notice to see the package in its entirety uh, completed, we won't be fulfilling that obligation to give them notice. Trustee Coburn, and then we do need to vote on the referral. Uh, a problem with the motion that I'm struggling with is the language, again, that it intends to approve the board policy policy handbook. So that kind of um, assumes, presupposes the outcome. Um, and so the wording of that motion, I would be very supportive of some amending in order for that motion to go through. And I'm just putting that out there. Thank you. So the motion before the assembly right now is, is whether or not to refer this to uh, a committee and not put it out. Um, we always have the motion when we send something out for notice of motion that it'll be approved. It's always that way. So we that motion's not out of order, but the motion we're considering right now is that we would be referring it back to committee for more work. And as you heard from the superintendent, there's a third option if some if this one was defeated to approve one to intend to serve for notice of motion pending housekeeping items. So we would only be able to um, make changes related to housekeeping, not substantive ones. So, all right, so we are now going to, I'm going to put the question to the assembly. The motion before the assembly right now is whether or not the Board of Education um, would like to refer the policy handbook to um, the a, a committee and then come back and serve notice of motion. 
So it would be referring it to a committee. Um, no, it was moved and seconded. So now we're voting all those in favor of referring it to a committee. OK, all those opposed to serving it to a community. A, a committee, sorry. OK, so we're back to the main motion. No, but there was four. There was four in favor. So the motion was defeated to refer to it to, for committee. So now we're back to the main motion. So the so the main motion is back again. And if somebody wanted to move a motion to amend this one, that would be fine. So the main motion we're sorry, trustee Ward. Yes. OK, so you would like to move a motion that we're still serving notice of motion to the district partner group or community, but you would like that to within the 60 days that it's out to make housekeeping items. Housekeeping. Okay, so that's moved by trustee Ward, seconded by vice chair Todd. So um, trustee Ward gets to speak first. It's his motion and then I'll take a speaker's list. OK, through the chair. Um, I think uh, with respect to the question here, I back to the definition of terms, what would constitute a housekeeping item and what wouldn't. Um, there are some substantive uh, things here and to um, um, Trustee Todd's point of, you know, commas and things like this seem somewhat insignificant, but it's like that old adage, you know, eat grandpa or eat grandpa, you know, the commas do matter. But, uh, but anyhow, uh, I, I think I'm hoping that a lot of what you have there does constitute as housekeeping. Um, but but they a lot of them aren't definitely so well, that would be and before i go to the next speaker which is uh, trustee coburn and then i'll take the rest of the speakers list that would be um a committee of the whole and we would have to agree that the items were housekeeping and not changing something substantive that went out so like the letter use and commas or where it says um chairs this committee but not that where you have to have special in front of in camera something that doesn't change the intent of of the motion and then items that were substantive like issues would have to then come by motion by by trustees to be then sent to policy committee so i then have um, trustee coburn and then if i could get hands up on that trustee wilson uh, and then after this motion which is to refer we need a motion to extend and then um, the motion will only go like we will extend by 20 minutes at a time but we any business that's not disposed of will go to the next agenda so trustee coburn thank you uh, to the chair so in understanding um trustee ward's um motion right amendment if I'm understanding, it's just a housekeeping. Um, the technical, and, and honestly, I, as much as I love a comma and I don't want to eat grandpa, I don't really care too much about that. It's the substantive things that um, are what I am, you know, what I'm thinking of. So the things that are, that are you know, important and, and such things as, you know, it's one thing to be missing a word, but it's another thing when that word is special in camera or in camera, like those are important words. So grammatically, no, it's just a word, but in this world, and we know it, some of these words and policies make a really big difference. And so I don't want to see us backed into a corner where we voted on something so that we can fix these housekeeping things, but actually in our world, housekeeping sometimes becomes substantive based on interpretation and context and the rules of grammar and then, something substantive gets to be tossed aside because it doesn't fit in this narrow parameter of what is grammar. Um, certainly it is not our job to be correcting anyone's grammar um, as our work. However, in this world, and as you know, in the world of policy interpretation, and sometimes policy is written with ambiguity and sometimes it's not, and that's the beauty of policy. And so when we are talking about policy, I think we need to be extremely cognizant of the word and I understand that it's cumbersome and like Trustee Ross, I would like to to get on with it, but I don't know if that's the right reason not to do it right. So I really would like to get the bulk of it out 
and come to some kind of agreement where we can say, look at these just aren't ready and give them the due care and attention that many people at this table want to get it. I think we are in broad agreement that there are some things that need to be changed. We just can't agree what they are, but does it matter that we don't agree what they are? We just agree that there's something that needs to change. Um, and I think that as, as a group, we should be able to find that solution. Uh, so that's all I have to say for consideration and thank you. Okay, so thank you. So once again, the motion that is before the assembly is to refer uh, to uh, to serve notice of motion and to um, have a meeting, uh, a committee meeting, board to address housekeeping items that are an issue in there, and then anything that was substantive at the next meeting, uh, when we adopt it, would have to then be referred to as uh, to policy committee. So, is there anybody else speaking to the notice of motion amendment? Go ahead, Trustee Wilson. Yes, I believe that this amendment doesn't accomplish what we need to accomplish here. That housekeeping is very clear in policy wording and in contractual wording. It is very much anything that does not change the intent or the language itself. So all of those parts. Now, once we pass this, then that means that we put those things to policy committee. But in the meantime, vice chair will not be chairing those meetings. That is a substantive change to say who chairs what meetings. That's not a housekeeping change. There's several things like notes. Who's taking the notes? Well, I guess we won't have the same people taking the notes once we pass these because that is a substantive change. We won't be recording the agenda topics under our minutes because that is not a comma or a capital. That is a substantive change. So we could get this done Instead of taking two years, like Trustee Todd pointed out, with going back to policy committee, we could get it done in a matter of minutes, or we can put everything back to policy committee because we all know housekeeping changes are small changes. So I don't agree with this amendment because we need larger changes. Okay, and last speaker I have on the list for the amendment is uh, Trustee Pearl. Um, firstly, I want to assure our leadership team that this is a process I believe every one of us here want to see go through to support you and support this district. Uh, we're not the only district that has done this. Um, I know there's a couple other school districts that have moved amendment procedures out and created its own process. So we're not unique in that. And so I, I, I know that unequivocally. Um, I'm interested in understanding as we try to um, unravel the unnecessary complexities that are going on here, which are really, really important, and to ensure that we're not creating, and I spoke to this before, unscalable processes for ourselves, and most important for a superintendent to do his work and to free him to do that. Um, that gets us caught up in, in um, mindsets that get us locked, and we're locked right now. And we're locked on some very important important conversations and um, I, I thank you Trustee Wilson for some of those points you brought out tonight because they are substantive and so I'm wondering within the motion we can amend the emotion to change it from housekeeping to 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 substan what are the substance of substance okay you know the word. thank you um, so that we can be confident collectively and ensure that when we walk away from this table in two years, that the leadership team is stable and equipped with sound policies. I am at this table outside of the conversation for inclusion and diversity and emergency preparedness um, under the umbrella of trying to create policy that supports these communities of ours. Um, and I, I use policy for my advocacy tool. That's what I use. That's my tool. So that being said, I'd like to understand if we can make a, an amendment to that to fix some wording so that we're able to pull out of that document so that it sounds so that you that secretary treasurer notes becoming valid. At this point, if you wanted to make substantive changes, we wouldn't be serving those emotions to the board. 
so what would have to happen is or no some motion from the board to the public what we would have to do is defeat trustee board well what's now the assembly's um, motion to um, serve no some motion but make housekeeping changes we'd have to defeat that then we would have to defeat the notice of motions going out and then this would have to go back to um, the board at some meeting uh, where we decide if we're going to pick up our, our policy book again. So those are our choices. Otherwise, what would have to happen is we would make the changes we could and then substantive ones could be immediately um, moved to go back to policy to come back to the board. Okay, last speaker. Sorry, I just need to clarify for the chair. Um, I'm not understanding. If we're, if we, why does it have to, so I'm trying to understand Really completely confused by the response, so forgive me. Uh, we did this as a collective and a community and a, and a committee, um, but we're saying do this the the uh, the minor adjustments and then move the substantive to commit a, another commit into policy. Um, can we not take the next 30 days and commit to that work in the next 30 days and say this board is going to commit to 30 days to do this so we can get these guys equipped and moving forward? I don't think 30 days is a huge sacrifice. I get we can do it for a while, but if we commit as a collective for 30 days as part of that motion to go, this is what we're doing, now we serve motion, I feel comfortable with that. We would, we would have to re-serve, we couldn't serve notice of motion tonight is what I'm saying. We couldn't serve notice of motion tonight and then go make substantive changes. So what we would, we would be doing is we would be defeating these notices of motion because that's what the motion is. And then, However, you know, you could follow, do a subsequent motion that we have a, a meeting of the whole in the next 30 days to review these, to send them back out. And then from there, we would decide to send them back out to most motion. So we need to, we would need to, you would need to defeat the amendment first, and then you would have to defeat the notice of motion for tonight, which would then, we would agree, I'm sure that the second notice of motion wouldn't come forward tonight. Um, because like if, as long as it's not moved and seconded, we can just agree that it they're connected enough that we're not going to vote on that motion tonight. Okay, so uh, just, just trying to yes. So we already. Yeah. So somebody so who. We would be without policy. No. So we, no. No. It, we wouldn't because we've just served notice of motion that we intend to repeal it. We would still have to repeal okay, it. Thank you. We've just served notice of motion. Somebody in the affirmative would just move a motion to reconsider pending the fact that um you know the other two aren't done so um we uh okay we have to vote on this so the amendment that's before the board right now is that the board of education um would serve notice of motion and do the housekeeping changes within um a committee um, prior to the 60 days coming back. So all those in favor of the amendment. Any opposed to the amendment? The amendment is um, defeated. So we're going back to the main motion, which is that the Board of Education, um, ha which is moved and seconded, serves notice of motion to the district's education community and its education partner groups that intends to approve the board policy handbook effective December 15th. That's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Uh, okay, well, it's the main motion, which is, is just putting the thing out as is. So is, is there any more discussion on that? Okay, go ahead, trustee work. Uh, so I'd just like to say, I think, uh, through the chair, you know, the trustee, can I do the trustees in general? I think this has been a really robust discussion, I feel, for uh, us, the staff. But I think um, substance and accuracy, to Trustee Wilson's point, uh, uh, should not be subordinated to uh, expedience or expediency. So I, I do suggest that we yeah, defeat this motion and then we follow uh, what uh, Trustee Crow was suggesting. I know that have to come in the form of the motion. So I suggest we defeat it. Okay, so the any other speakers on this main motion? Uh, well, once, um, so, so the motion has to fail and then the assembly would have to agree to that but we do need to do a motion to have 20 more minutes
So let's just get the motion. We, we need we need to get the motion that's on the floor off the floor first. So we have it moved and seconded. All those in favor of serving notice of motion. All those opposed. Okay, so that motion's defeated. All right. So um All those in favor of serving notice of motion. All those opposed. The motion's defeated. Okay, so move for 20 minutes, which would give us, um, uh, we would be then adjourning and any business that was still on the agenda would go to the next meeting 20 minutes from now, which would be 947. Moved by Trustee Coburn, seconded by Vice Chair Todd. All those in favor? Standing by 20 minutes, that motion is carried. All right, so um, given the outcome, of the first motion. I'm not going to ask for a mover and seconder on the second motion, which means it's never become business of the board. What I do need, to, um, we, we would need to go back and reconsider. So, yes, of the three. And so we're taking the, that we're repealing the, the bylaws out. So it's moved by Vice Chair Todd, seconded by Trustee Coburn. Um, all those in favor of receiving that motion pending it coming back. Okay, that's carried. So then there was a third motion related to this that came out of debate. So it's what's called an incidental motion. You're moving it off the floor incidental to other business. So that's why it's not under new business. So incidental to the previous, um, pardon me. <laughs> we, um, there's a motion by Trustee Pearl that she'd like to move. And I've just lost my cap. Go ahead, Trustee Pearl. Okay, I don't have the perfect wording. I'm trying to scribble it out quickly. So my motion is to assemble within the 30 days as committee of the whole to ensure the board policy handbook has been completed of amendments to move forward with a motion in 30 days. Motion's carried. All right, so next item on the agenda is a motion from uh, Trustee Coburn. Um, so to my trustees, I will keep this as brief as I possibly can. I would like to read the whole motion. Um, I think it's very important and I'm going to uh, start. I have a couple of supporting points and then I'm hoping we can just move along and let everyone go home. So, whereas September 30th is Orange Shirt Day, Every Child Matters is where we recognize and honor the survivors, survivors of residential schools and remember those who did not return home. Whereas the Langley School District number 35 is located on the unceded traditional territories of the Kwantlen, Capesi, Matsui and Semiamu nations. Whereas the Langley Board of Education on June 6, 2015 accepted the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and committed to the work that is required in order to walk the path of, path of reconciliation. Whereas 2018, happy anniversary everyone, a new board, two years we've been in, was elected and sworn in since 2015, the work has changed. Understanding that reconciliation is an ongoing and dynamic journey for all Canadians, Honoring the commitment that was made by the previous board and moving forward in their good work, it is time to reassess where to go from here. Whereas the Langley Board of Education continues the ongoing work of the past board, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission did release 94 calls to action. Within these calls, there are items that address the educational system. This is where we must continue to do the difficult work. Therefore, be it resolved that the Langley Board of Education School District number 35 focuses their work on agreed upon items within the 94 calls to action so that we will move our country forward, continuing on our path of reconciliation. And, but I believe that we need a bit of clarification on the motion. So, yeah, go ahead, Trustee Coburn. So the motion is that we, you know, uh, recommit as this board and um, I think in um, just the events happening around it's um, even more pertinent. Uh, Phyllis Jack was, uh, did reach out to me and personally thank me for bringing this forward um, so that was quite an honor and I would like to actually draw on Trustee Ross's um, love of books and I just think that as a board, we could come together and agree upon, because Mr. Pugh did also point out that these can be quite high level, 
things that we could as this board, a new board, not a past board, recommit to or commit to to help move forward at a much higher leadership level. And I am not opposed to reading a book and telling my trustees about it, my learning. Um, so whatever we as a group decide as this board would be what it comes. And that's all I'd like to put out. Thank you for your consideration. Hey, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you for your heart and for your 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 work on this. And thank you for the clarification because I was a little bit confused where the motion was going and the intent of it. Um, so it, what I'm hearing, if it's correct, is it to reaffirm the work that we're doing? Okay, so I, I support that. I, and I just felt like I needed to speak to this because um, that whole piece of reconciliation that begins with me, uh, I just want to be cognizant of what we do as a board, not to be directing and voting to the ISO and telling the committee what to do. And so I just wanted to be really clear that we're we're saying we're recommitting to the good work that's going on and, and, and committing to moving forward in that growth. Um, so if that's what I'm hearing you say, I'm like, I love it. Yes, and I have a quick question. Yeah, I'll be quick. Um, so yeah, I totally um, never to direct more in consultation and collaboration. So I was very happy to have Mr. Pew here this evening because I was able to ask him directly, what can we do to serve this and to be part of this? And as a board, what can we do that's going to carry us through? And I'm going back to this book idea because it's where am I? I love that idea. I love that idea that maybe all this board will do is commit to reading one book each and telling our colleagues what it was. And that could really change how somebody interprets. Like when I listened to Trustee Ross, especially his response to that first book, I thought was incredible. That enough will serve on reconciliation journey. So as this board, what do we as this board, this 2018, 2022 board want to commit to? Continuing everybody in addition to, not instead of, or directive. Thank you. Any other comments on that? So, uh, yes, Trustee Todd. Thank you. Uh, no problem supporting this at all. Um, I thank you again for it. Um, I, as just an update, uh, I was Googling, and um, as of 2019, the federal government has actually answered about 10 of the 94. So, there is much work and, and somebody that's somewhat cynical about it talks that it'll be 2057 by the time they finish all 94. Um, we can do the work here. Um, I did have one question. So when you say their work, are you implying like as part of our work plan or because we do have a work plan we're, we're developing. I'm just wondering, is that where you want that work to go on? For my, me, I, I, I'm not deeply invested on where that work is or what that work is. I am totally open to this is a collaboration, it's consultation, it's something as a board. Reconciliation is a big term. Um, and so as this board, what do we agree upon? And it could be one thing, it could be six things. It doesn't matter to me. It's our board to make this decision. And whatever the next board does is off of the work that the past board you know, seven generations behind, ahead, whatever we want to do to make it our own, I'm open to. Just so I fully understand, are you sort of looking for the board, say in, in one of our board governance sessions to talk about that, or is it an individual path? No, I'd like it to be a board commitment. So either an education committee, we could have a presenter or in a working session or anything that we are where we would do this kind of work as a board um, to make what we are going to decide. And it could be reading a book. It could be um, we're going to try and get more resources. We're going to whatever it is that we decide to recommit to. So the past board committed to reconciliation and reconciliation isn't lip service. It's we need actionables. So when this is all done, what is this board going to say? This is what we did as a board, not as a district. Our district is second to none. As a board, this collective did this in this walk. That's kind of where I'm going. And again, it is a, a collaborative. It is all of us. 
it, it belongs to the board when we leave it. Good work. So uh, through the chair, the trustee Coburn, uh, my challenge with understanding this as well as much as I appreciate the heart and, and where it's going is just um, in my uh, knowledge of motions is I think it in, in some sense to me lacks a specificity of like what a particular motion. So um, if, if I know what the exact end, I know what the end game is in general, but if it's a particular thing, then it's easier for me to vote on. I support the heart of it, of course, and I agree with Trustee Todd and Trustee Pearl and Trustee Ross. So, thanks. Any other speakers? Okay. All right. So, thank you, Trustee um, Coburn. Um, so, all those in, we're, we're complete our speaking. We've got a mover and a seconder, right? Okay. We're just a long night. All those in favor? Any opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Okay, so we are at the end of the business that's on the agenda. I know you had motions you wanted to add, but there is no way within the last few minutes we're going to be able to um, hear two motions. I'm wondering if you'd be willing to send them back to agenda setting to be on the next agenda, which is what would happen if we had items still on here, because otherwise we need to extend the meeting by another 20 minutes for motions that were not part of the original package. I really think they're important and I would hope that the board would grant us that time to just hear these motions. Otherwise, we have to wait a full month to bring right. them to the public. But it really, they, they could have been served earlier and it's really, we're right at the end of our time. But we still have a few minutes. We extended by 20 and we're But we extended that. by 20, but we've only got about four minutes left of that 20. I hope that we have nine minutes left. Okay, my clock's different then. So, but, um, I mean, it would be up to the assembly whether to add the motions and really we're asking our staff to stay for a very long time. Then we'd have to do another motion and everybody else that wanted motions this month sent them to agenda setting and they were decided whether they went on this agenda or a future agenda. So mm -hmm. I just think in the time left, I would like to try to say my try motion. to try to add them in the last couple minutes. OK, so. Uh, This funding for COVID-19 to be increased to include financial provisions for anyone forced to use sick time while in quarantine. Sorry, Trustee Wilson, that motion was already when you asked to add it, referred to in-camera. It's an in-camera item. It's personal property. I have double-checked with the secretary treasurer, so I will not be allowing that one tonight. I would like to challenge the chair on that, and sure. this isn't the same motion, just for your information. You'd like to challenge the chair on adding a on motion. On your ruling of saying that this motion is an in-camera motion. Okay, you can challenge that. So um, I would, I uh, as chair, believe that and have confirmed and in line with our policies, items that have to do with discussions that affect our personnel or property or legal or other items under our policy, including those that have to do with compensation or bargaining or any of those natures are not to be discussed at a public meeting. They're meant to be in camera. So I'm sorry that motion's out of order and you can only speak to the ruling of it being out of order, but not to the motion itself. I'm sorry. Yes, perfect. Okay, thank you for... Um... Oh, okay, yes, I see that. So yeah, I believe that um, this motion does not refer to personnel or compensation. That's why it is in order. This is a motion of advocacy. It is our job as trustees to advocate for staff in this district and students. And when you search through the subject matter related to in camera and what constitutes personnel, it is all over referring to matters that identify individuals by name or circumstance. Those must be protected. This is a far more general, and we have had motions consistent with this in the past. This is an issue of advocacy. I've been on this board for six years. We often talk about advocating for our staff. We actually walked out of a meeting for our staff. Um, so when we're talking about staff in a global, we've done it often, um, not an in-camera item at all, totally within our job purview. Okay, thank you, Trustee Cooper. Uh, Vice Chair Tuck. Again, it's a 
Right. Yeah. Point of order. Um, so right now there is no Minister of Education apparently. So I'm just wondering where the letter would go to. the decision of the chair. Raise your hand. All those opposed? Okay, so um, my order of it being out of order has been overruled. So you can, now we are voting on whether or not to add it to the agenda. So all those in favor of adding it to the agenda tonight. All those opposed to adding it to the agenda. Okay, the motion will not be added to the agenda. Okay, next item. My next item is a motion that staff investigate alternative options for anyone required to be off work due to quarantine requirements implemented by the provincial health officer and the costs associated with these options. So once again, um, I am ruling that one out of order. I gave an exhaustive reason why in the letter saying that it is a staff matter specifically with this one. Investigating alternative options for employees who are required off work during a quarantine is not a an change. It doesn't say employees. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the one you have. Read that one more time then. So that staff investigate alternative options for anyone required to be off work due to quarantine requirements implemented by the provincial health officer and the costs associated with those options. I'm sorry, we only are purview of our own employees. Who would anyone be? Um, anyone who anybody like is in the district who requires but they'd be days. employees <laughs> they'd be employees they would like we're not we don't have purview over like the employer across the road so it'd be our employees correct still it would be a wide personnel not okay, an individual still a personnel issue i'm sorry it's out of order you can challenge the chair i'll challenge the chair okay so <laughs> seek over and seconding as i've said this is a personnel issue we're talking about um options we don't even know if we have any purview over in camera item it is something that we wouldn't be discussing in in person so i've ruled this out of order um anybody like to speak to that jesse coburn and specifically asking at a public meeting about a particular group of cultural presenters because they fall outside of regular union and benefits. So we've had this conversation publicly and then to hear that it's not allowable. So one public meeting and now I'm not allowed. To, it's just a contradiction that I can't support. I tried to rule you out of order there too. We were on teams and, and you didn't respond. So that, I, I felt it was out of order at that time too. So Trustee Wilson, and then we're going to vote on whether or not the decision of the chair will be sustained. Yeah, so for the same reasons I have stated previously, when it is a broad stroking of all employees, it is not a personnel issue. Personnel issues are protected in camera to protect the names of individuals or the comments associated where someone could link it to an individual or a group of members. This is a broad motion that does not refer to individual personnel. I'm sorry, I believe it's still speaking last, but it's personnel and compensation, and those matters are a matter of in-camera. So, um, I this decision is, is uh, upheld, the motion's out of order. We have now exhausted the end of the 20 minutes, so at that point, our um, meeting is, is complete. Uh, so motion to adjourn moved by Trustee Coburn, seconded by Trustee Todd. All those in favor, motions adjourned. Have a good night, everyone.